Welcome to the Bantams online YouTube channel. Now, I don't usually do videos, but I have created an update, an add-on for Football Manager 2024. It's the Bradford City Realistic add-on, which gives you the opportunity to experience what Graham Alexander will be experiencing as the Bradford City Manager. And here's just a quick what you do. First of all, you need to head off to the Steam Workshop. There is a link in the description to this. And then all you do is subscribe to this on the workshop and then it will show up in FM24 for you and I will show you how you go about getting everything how it needs to be so you can have things as realistic as possible. Okay, welcome to part one of episode one. At the start of this video, it'll be the setup tutorial, and then part two of this video will be the first week in the shoes of Graham Alexander, where you'll get to see the first match, which is against Barrow, and compare how I get on with how Graham Alexander got on, and then the future episodes will be how the story goes. And we'll see how closely it matches what goes on in real life with Bradford City as well, because as we speak, the transfer window is now open and things are starting to get interesting. But let's get straight into this. We need to select the career mode and then you need to go to the database drop down menu and select. Now I've got a few things here, but select the Bradford City Realistic B Graham Alexander option. Uh, make sure that is ticked and if you want to tick the club name fix it you can do don't run the um, any of the other updates because it's included with this the November update for instance but um, I'm just going to sort things out the way I want them um, but like I say avoid any other updates but you can have things like the club and competitions name fix so hit confirm and then we move on to the next bit here we are in the game setup mode. It's uh, select the real world. Again, this is important because we want everything to be the same as it is in real life. I think it's important to have Vanarama, National League, North and South included because we're going to have some players that might be going there. Uh, but here's where we really get into things. Uh, we don't want to add any key staff. We want to leave that as it is. We want to disable the first transfer window activity. This is really, really important because again, you don't want any changes. Everything is um, its all correct for when you will take over Bradford City. Um, and the rest of it is down to personal preference and then start game. Just to speed things up a little bit, you can go down to starting at the very first game of the season. Now, the reason I say this is because you're going to be going on holiday straight away and applying for the Bradford City job. Here we are on My Manager Profile. Obviously, you'll have your own. Use Profile is what you need to hit. So once you've done that, this is the important bit. You need to start unemployed. You will get the Bradford City job. Don't worry about it. Start unemployed, though. And with managerial style, we want to look at making sure we've got the right qualifications to actually get the Bradford City job. So you don't have to go as far as a Continental Pro license. An A license should get you. I'm not sure about the B license. Maybe that will as well. But in this bit, it's important. Don't be a Sunday League footballer. Don't be semi-pro. You might get away with a professional footballer at local level, but to play it safe, regional level, is the least that you need to get this job and then what you do with your attributes are completely down to you that's all your own choice but next we hit confirm hit start playing and then we'll get on to the next screen and um, a little tip here for you this is where it's worth saving a backup copy uh, before you go ahead any further from here the reason for it is if it doesn't kind of work out as realistic as you'd like it which it will eventually it will first time usually uh, you've got a backup you save that and then if it doesn't turn out how you expect it to do for any reason you can just reload the original version and then repeat the process until you're happy with it so we're going to go on holiday and 
what we do is we go on holiday until don't apply for managerial jobs or anything like that just go straight on holiday until the 16th of october in which time around that day either mark hughes will resign or he'll get sacked and you'll be ready to take over as bradford city manager uh, just another quick tip while we're doing this if for any reason mark hughes gets sacked earlier than expected before the 16th you will find that you might have to delay when you get your job press delay for a week if you need to and that way you can guarantee you'll take over for the barrow game but here we go mark hughes has been sacked and we're going to apply for the bradford city job now as you can see there's no assistant manager we apply hit apply for job and then it's just a matter of playing the waiting game until we get offered the position i'll fast forward you through to that so here we go we've got the Bradford City job interview offer and Ryan Sparks is the one there that you can see offering the job uh, but on the interview there's nothing I could do about it it's Stefan Rupp who does the interview just hit the positive accept him what he wants it says concern about your emotional ties just go to I'm professional enough not to let them get in the way and again you're trying to just go along with what they say on this what you need to do is just make that promise don't try anything too extravagant with the backroom staff i'm going to say that i want to make wide scale changes you don't have to but the reason you do it is because you won't get to change it later if you say you're happy with what you've got we can negotiate a bit of a budget for it here I wouldn't do the same with the team because that's set in stone but with the backroom staff i'm going to say that i want to make wide scale changes work within the wage budget also it does have we are making it self-sustainable just agree with it no compromises and again don't exceed expectations just agree with what you've been asked because otherwise you'll be held to it and you'll be under major pressure so we're going to hit agree here we're going to avoid relegation in this case which is fair enough for me what do we think of the wage budget that's in and around what the wage budget actually is in comparison with other teams it's about right as well so again we can't compromise with this one or make demands so just agree with it and you'll be working with a realistic budget that Bradford City are working with or Graham Alexander is anyway it's good enough and let's get out of there without making any demands let's just hit the neutral option and that is the job interview over so obviously it's going to be a few days that are going to pass the next thing that happens is you're going to be asked about your changes that you mentioned in the interview about the backroom staff you can decline that it won't affect your job chances but what i suggest is it's a good time to go in and have a look at the staff if you do want to make any changes which i do um so this is what i'm going to do so i'll show you the workings of that and here you see already the jobs that are already there i'm getting rid of the head of youth development because i want to bring in a new one colin doyle is also a player so i'm going to keep him on the coaching staff for now uh, but i will get rid of mark truman he's a loan manager and i'm not going to be able to hire another one of those uh, but still i need to change make changes there i'm getting rid of my head um performance analyst and my head physio because i can do that um, and i want to bring in better physios um, and the head of sports science as well with the physios you'll see these two of one so i'm going to leave that alone just so when i come to offer jobs to physios later at least i'll get the option hopefully to be able to just replace those and i'll get to replace both of them but i'll just go through this quickly and do what i'm doing and that's dealt with so here i am i've had the approach and it's time to start negotiations i'm going to add a clause i'm going to negotiate you don't have to but i like to be difficult and you can push it a little bit but i won't push it too much just get the job and you can start work and here begins the manager's job part two this is all about the Bradford City manager's job. I'm taking Graham Alexander's place. I'm going to be looking at working with a squad like he has to in real life with all the issues that are coming up in this January transfer window. 
it's going to be based on the same formation he plays as well as you can see the assistant manager's position is vacant i'm going to hire my own assistant manager uh, you'll have to do that as well i've got the same injury issues players coming back from injuries um, as was in real life at the time as you can see the formation here is different to the formation we're going to be using um, I'm going to be using the same sort of formation Graham Alexander is, therefore it means I'm having to face the same issues he does in terms of how to make players fit into that and who to get rid of, who to keep, because the formation does matter. As you can see, we've got to become self-sustainable. If you're a Bradford City fan, you will have heard that a few times. I'm going to have to lower that wage budget a little bit because the finances are at their limit so i've got to see people go out before they can come in and it's going to be hard making decisions uh, on who needs to go and who needs to stay here we are with the results so far and as you can see barrow is the next game we've just had an fa cup match and we are pretty much where we were in real life at the time when graham alexander took over 19th place 17 points on the board so far um not too unrealistic to where we were so all the same challenges tyler smith has got a, fair, a, a decent tally for his goal scoring and uh, jake young has also got five goals as well so that's something we'll be monitoring so here we go the full squad we got all the players that are here ryan east is one that is leaving on a free transfer on the 29th i don't know how that's programmed in I, th I don't know whether that's happened by accident or because of the timing of it or something that i've got on there but it's been updated he's leaving anyway that's what happened in real life it's happening here let's get on with the tactical side of things quickly uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for a route one it's not going to be a total route one that we're playing it is going to be direct but i want to get this formation that we're using when it comes to tactics and style of playing the game i'm going to go into what i prefer uh it will be a little bit based on what Bradford city are playing but i want to have my own style of football getting the best out of the team we've got that's all down to what i think's best you might not but i would suggest playing it with the same formation so you have all the same challenges that graham alexander does we're going to have slightly more direct passing so it's not much more direct i want a higher tempo and then i want to work from the wings as well there will be other things i'm looking at later but out of possession i'm just going to push that back line up a little bit and i also want to have a bit of pressing going on i'll see how we fare with the pressing game but we need a higher line up top for that and also i want to prevent crosses coming in as well that's going to be something that's important to me and um, i'll look at preventing short goalkeeper distribution depending on what team we're playing i want to counter press again we'll see how we get on with that whether i revert back to regrouping or not i don't know and a personal preference of mine i prefer the goalkeepers to throw it out to the flanks so we can get moving quickly and i do prefer some counter-attacking play as well so we're quick moving out from the back but we also will trigger a press when they're in possession and we'll have to see how the players fare are they fit enough to do it are they good enough to do it i don't know but i just want to look at the wage budget and show you that it's at seventy one thousand. we're over budget by a thousand as you can see we've got some of the players that are on high wages like tomkinson who's on loan but we are paying him his wage that's five thousand pounds per week with a 2.2k monthly fee as well so that's something we're going to have to have a look at when it comes to reducing the wage bill is he worth keeping i don't know yet um andy cook is on four grand a week and he's on until 2026 he's going to be very hard to get rid of if i want to uh so the other option naturally is going to be Vidane oliver because again we've got andy cook in that position he is here till 2025 so we'll be having to find a team that are willing to buy him um so all of that to look at but onto the staff we've got a number of positions to fill at the moment in recruitment medical team and the coaching staff i need my assistant manager i need a head of youth development 
and then I want to look at filling the coaching roles. Then we go to the head of sports science and the head physios. They're going to be positions I'm going to fill as well. The scouting one, though, again, I've taken a bit of a gamble and I hope it pays off. There's no guarantees, but let's get on with it. John Ebrell is the man that I've found that I want to be my assistant manager. He's got some good ratings and I also know he used to be you know, former Everton player and he was at Oldham as assistant manager. So let's go for him. I'm going to go for John Goodman and... Um, Again, I've got to be careful now because I really need to get him. Jimmy Hampson is a scout that I'd like to get. This would be really good if I could get him. So, um, again, getting the deal is important. As a coach, I want Arthur Olbiston, former Man United player, somebody with a bit of experience. Alex Gilliard is going to be the vice captain. I'm going to have to get rid of some staff here, as it seems my little gamble not to sack staff before appointing anybody has backfired and there you can see I haven't been able to get Jimmy Hampson he's not interested now but we'll try him later on again Stan Martin has agreed a mutual termination and Lee Adams has been sacked the physio uh, same problem as with the scouts but we'll fix that later Sumter is going to take over Scott Dyer's duties which is what I wanted to happen with the scouts but it didn't Hannah Herbert is somebody that I've hired uh, she's going to be head performance analyst Lee Mooney, recruitment analyst, he's been hired. Arthur Orbiston has been hired. John Goodman has been hired and of course the assistant manager. John Ebrill is now in place. Here we are with the injuries for the next match. With Vadin Oliver and Alex Patterson failing their fitness tests. And what we're going to do is go straight into the match. Let's not mess about. I've got my work cut out because Gilead's slightly injured. Not ideal for me. But I know he will last 75 minutes. Um, in the real fixture, Bradford City lost this one 2-1. Graham Alexander's first match in charge. And it's my first match in charge. So we'll see how I get on. Just going through, making some changes now. Again, I've got an issue just looking at McDonald, where I, if I can put him in instead. Decided against it. Decided I wanted to start with Gilead and see how we get on from there. So switching them back because it likes to switch the opposite way. Uh, just want to sort out their positions and we'll get on to the game now. Um, but this is a lineup, and you can see the bench has Derbyshire, McDonald, Point, and Taylor, Richards, and Oyegoki on the bench. I've got nothing in the centre of midfield other than McDonald. Plan is he'll come on for. Alex Gilliard in the 75th minute, so I'll just protect him from injuries. Other than that, pretty straightforward. So here we are at Valley Parade. It's the first match. I get a warm welcome, obviously, as a new Bradford City manager. The fourth choice manager by Ryan Sparks, just in case you wanted to know. Couldn't get anybody else and finally came to me. Well, I applied for the job, so... Bradford City in 19th place, Barrow in 15th. Barrow not doing as well as they were in real life, but... Here we go with the players entering the pitch. And it's Barrow to get the game underway. And Campbell, who has the ball, who plays it to White. White plays it forward back to Campbell. And Campbell plays it back to White. White plays it out wide. And now they look to attack the Barrow. Barrow heading down the wing past Rydalge to Worrell. And that's 1-0 already. And that's inside the 30 seconds that it took. It's been disallowed. Well, that's lucky for me because that was the worst start that Graham Alexander got off to. I thought he was going to be football manager reflecting real life for a second there, but no, it's not. But let's just encourage the team because the possession stats didn't don't look particularly good at the moment. And um, now we've got an attack. Rydalge with the throw-in. Plays it to Smallwood, who finds Gilliard. Gilliard, Kelly now, looking for options ahead of him. Finds Gilliard again. And Gilliard can't really find anybody, so he runs with a ball. But light shot at the goalkeeper. Bell describing it as a shot, that. And um, the Barrow keeper kicks it long. And so far, not a lot happening, but Tompkinson wins that header, which is was a nice... Nice to see him winning the header there. You like to see that from your central defenders, of course. Obviously, I'm watching um, Tompkinson quite close. Let's see how he gets on. Because he is an expensive player to have. 
Um, and this is a corner now, headed away again by Tompkinson. And I'm going to be in such a dilemma if he's going to be quite so good. But now Whitfield in the area and is... What happened there? Clatters off of Andy Cook, does that? 25 minutes into the game now. And we've got an injury to Richie Smallwood. Perfect. Just what I needed. Ruins my whole plan. McDonald comes on for him. And not much action to report since then. So we're into the 41st minute. And Lewis has the ball at his feet. Kicks it long. Looking for Andy Cook. But he didn't get there. McDonald has it. Now what can he do? Mm. Oh, he does. Holiday out wide. Halliday gets a crossing, Cook on the end of it, and that's 1-0 at Bradford City. And the first goal of the season for Andy Cook, surprisingly enough. But that's been disallowed, offside, and wouldn't you just know it, so two goals have been disallowed in the first half. Well, it's nice to get the ball in the net at least. Um, Platt has the ball now, plays it to Kelly. Kelly's featured a little bit in this match. Doesn't quite know what to do with the ball, and he pops it forward into space, but James Chester... Easily gets that, plays it back to the goalkeeper and relative safety. And what's the goalkeeper going to do? He's going to kick it long. And that's going to land at the feet of Kieran Kelly, who just plays it back to Harry Lewis, who then knocks it forward to Tomkinson. Tomkinson to Cook. Cook finds Halliday. Halliday looking dangerous here and Walker's in on goal. Shoots and that's saved well by the goalkeeper, Farman for Barrow, but it will go out for a corner. And this is going to be an outswinger by Walker. I do not like outswinging corners. And that is back to Walker. Walker now looking for Gilliard. Gilliard shoots, saved by the goalkeeper. And that'll be another corner of Bradford City piling on the pressure at the end of the first half here. Jimmy Walker, nice ball, but and that is nil-nil at half-time. Two goals disallowed, one for each. And I'm just going to give them their talking to now. I'm not that impressed with the midfield because they barely had any possession. And let's get this second half underway soon. I just want to increase the directness of that passing because I noticed it reset itself. Uh, and as for that, probably keep everything else the same. And Andy Cook gets the second half underway. And already, Bradford City lose possession. Tomkinson, well won back, but only as far as a Barrow player and Whitfield has it. Now, Smith, what can he do with this? Absolutely nothing. That were disappointing. Gotts comes away with it to Worrell. Worrell just trying to find someone to pass to. He does. Asqua. Whitfield... Down the left now, coming forward, Campbell has it. Finds White, White just looks, passes it to Warren, to Asqua. Gotts fires over the bar. But um, it's a free kick. That Walker fires in, Tomkinson. And that, just over the bar. But Tomkinson certainly um, playing his part today. Brad Halliday having a good match, as per usual. And this is going to be an in-swinger from Walker this time. Corner, 53 minutes gone. McDonald, Gilliard shoots. Oof, off of the bar. That was close. Well played, Alex Gilliard. And obviously I'm running to the end of the time I've got with him, Gall Gilliard. Ooh, that's starting to look tired. Walker has it on the edge of the box. Into the box now. Bradford City 1-0 up, David Warrell on goal, but it all started and finished with Jamie Walker. Jamie Walker fired that, I don't know where it was going to go, to be fair, until it hit, well you'll see. Probably would have fired wide, had it not been for Warrell sticking his leg out and Bradford City are 1-0 up, I'll take them, but I think we need to um, get Gilliard off the pitch now, but I've got nobody to replace him with. Uh, it's going to take a bit of rearranging this, I think. We're 1-0 up at least, so we've got a bit more flexibility. Let's get Taylor on, <laughs> of all people. Yeah, Taylor on, and what I'm going to do is just put one man up front, 
pull the midfielder into the centre, pointing on for Gilliard, we're going to go for Cautious and hopefully see out the last 10 minutes. That's the plan anyway. I'm not taking any risks. I want my three points. Don't want to lose. That's certainly something I don't want to do. And maybe I should have done this a second earlier, but we'll tell the team to focus now. It's all about making sure they don't score. And if we can do that, it's a job well done and it's three points. And thank you very much. I'll take that. Ball goes out harmlessly. Double substitution for them. And just going to select slightly lower tempo. Take the focus off their time waste off and still. And hopefully that'll see us through. Clap back to the goalkeeper. Sensible, sensible. I like that. Tomkinson. This is what I want to see. A bit of sensible play. Tomkinson keeps hold of the ball. Rather too long for my liking. But that's fair enough. He goes back to the goalkeeper. Happy with that. We're in injury time. There's no rush. Kelly. To Richards. That's good. Taylor. Taylor plays it forward. Not exactly what I was looking for. And now they've got possession of the ball. I want it does to keep possession. And I blame Taylor for that somewhat. Let's just hope nothing happens here. Kelly wins that. Well done, Kelly. McDonald to Richards. McDonald to Richards. He loses the ball to White. Fall in again. Barrow coming forward in search of this equaliser. Stevenson. White. Is he going to have a shot? He does. It's charged down by Kelly. And Kelly puts it out for a throw. Safety first. And prevents a corner as well, which is more important. Tries to get the crossing, that's going to go out. Is that for a corner? It is, I think. And this is dangerous again, deep into injury time. Can we see this through? Point and chasing. Telford puts it out for a throw into Bradford City. We'll take that. And now, if we can just waste a bit more time, Richards with a throw in. Finds Cook. And, and that's a really poor ball. And he's giving it to Stevenson and shoots. And that is an absolute nightmare. Robbie Gotts shoots from distance. Mistake by Andy Cook. And it's one all. No sooner said than done. And we have just thrown away the three points. A mistake from Andy Cook, who just... I don't know what he's thinking there. And Gotts, fair play to him, wasted no time in shooting. And perhaps we could say Harry Lewis could have done better with that, but... He's a still chance for late drama. Halliday on the attack. Halliday still with the ball into the area, charged down, but that's cleared away. And that is that. Bradford City won, Barrow won. It's a respectable start. I'm not going to complain. Won all. I'd have taken it before the game, so we'll take the point. But anyway, that's it for this episode. The next is going to be from the Notts County match. I'll show highlights of the FA Cup match. And then we'll start looking into what players we want as well. But for now, I'm just going to say I'm not happy with your performance. And leave it at that because there's nothing else that can really be said. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy watching this, please hit the like button. It all helps. And do subscribe and hit the notification button as well. So you can be notified as soon as the next episode of this comes out. And as you can see, we're in 20th place. We're on 18 points. We're still not a million miles from where we were in real life. So there's a lot to play for still. See how things get on. And you can compare it to how Graham Alexander got on as well. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Bantams Online as well. Also on Instagram. Um, follow me on those and on here. Until next time, thanks for watching and I shall catch you later. Bye bye.